Welcome. This is the most complete end-to-end -end tutorial of Power BI you will find. We're going to build this. We're going to start with a blank canvas and build this Netflix analytics dashboard. We're going to use all of the new features that have been developed within Power BI, the new reference cards. They're going to be interactive, including reference labels. We're going to use the new slicers. They're going to have advanced formatting. We're going to use geo mapping that enables bubble size dynamic selection. We're going to embed images into a table so you can sort and tell that story. We're going to build the overall interactive design of a dashboard from scratch. Going through this tutorial, you will go from beginner or advanced all the way to advanced, wherever you are in that spectrum, because we're going to cover everything. So go to GitHub, download this file, the link's in the description, and let's follow along together. Please hit the subscribe button, like this, and leave comments. I will answer them. I will help if you get hung up on anything. We'll go through this together. So now, let's get ready to build this and jump into Power BI. Let's go. All right, here we are. We're in the dashboard. Before we start building anything, we always need to put ourselves in the frame of mind to say, what are we building and what question are we gonna solve? So the first part of this tutorial is we're gonna do an overview of the final product. Then you'll be able to navigate the chapters to find specific sen sections you may be interested in pulling content from, or you can follow along step-by-step step to build this entire process. So the question we're gonna be answering with this dashboard is give me information and analytics around ratings and the number of votes behind them while telling the story of how that's happening across countries, across genres, and by title. So let's look at some of the things that are gonna be really cool in this dashboard. First off, the appearance and design. Dashboard, you mm -hmm. wanna go top down, left to right when it comes to the aggregation of storytelling. So you can see right away, we know this is Netflix. We're gonna know filters. So we're gonna look into the filter capabilities. You can see when you hover, it's gray. You click it, it turns red. These subtle details are cool and they're awesome. And they're what we're gonna get into in the filter section. For right now, we'll leave it, we'll select both of them. Now the KPI section, this is the new reference card. These things look great. You can see that we're showing at the very top, Netflix with an image. It says, here's the total movies and shows, and then a section for each of them. Here are the movies, here are the shows. Underneath that, we give more information that says the average rating is 6.7 across all these titles. Here are the number of votes for each of those uh, movies or shows, and then broken out. And what's important across this entire tutorial is you need to watch this and take it in because you will learn how to do this so you can apply these principles to any data sets you work with. Look at how good this looks. There's accent bars, there's division, there's subtleness, there's light glows. We're gonna talk about how to build all of these. More importantly, it's the way that things interact. So you always wanna think about that as well. Right here, movies have ratings, one to nine, and then there's averaged out. So first thing we can do is just say, okay, I wanna look at all the eights, click this. We know there are 713 movies that span across the, all of the different genres that rank uh, for that group. We can click seven, we can do the same thing. You can see how it, su it subtly changes, but then it filters all the content as well. So on the right hand side, you can see that. What's nice and very subtle about this is that it, with behind the scenes in this, there's gonna be a gradient mapping. The way that these gradients happen are very intentional. And we're gonna get into how to do that. Um, so you can see with the leveling. Now with the bar chart, this is a great way to build bar charts. You build a stack that has an intentional color. Your eye immediately knows, okay, this is correlated to rating as it's following the same gradient, but then the count of the titles. So we can see comedy, well, they had the most of 1,352 titles. Their rating was 6.6. .6, and maybe we want to change that. We want to look at just the fours. Okay, comedy is still taking the lead. Again, maybe we'll look at a country. We'll get to that section here in the bottom left, France. I'll turn on the highlighter and the click animation as well. So that's going to be the bar chart. We're going to dive in how to build this, how to make it look this way. Now that the shows. So what's really cool, anytime you're building a dashboard, again, there's more detail on the right. 
we start on the left, aggregating in the top, the top left corner, then going left to right and top to bottom, it gets a little bit more granular, more country information in the bottom left, on the right, title information. How cool does this look? I'm gonna show you how to put in the images dynamically, but now what's nice is that you can use this table to sort and answer the questions, okay, well, what title's at the top? So maybe in this case, I'm gonna pick on the bottom left-hand corner, oh, I don't know, New Zealand. So these are all the movies from New Zealand, and I'm gonna to wanna to know, what has the highest rating? Well, let's sort by rating descending. Okay, Lord of the Rings, New Zealand, there you go, checks out where it was filmed. And the number of votes for each category as well. Japan, same kind of thing. So when you're building a dashboard, you wanna lay out information that can proactively answer questions. Right now on the screen, we know the total number of counts that are in anything, but you wanna say how many and then what? So if I click, okay, how many are in the top nine? All right, 31, two movies, 29 shows. Well, what are they? Stranger Things, if Fargo's go right down the list. So we're gonna talk about how to do that, how to do this table as well as maybe you have a show in mind. So you can come up here, search for a specific show, uh, type in any kind of, you know, whatever you're looking for, and it will come up. So then, another really cool feature is the geography. And when you have a map here in the bottom, you can move, you can zoom, you can come in and out, you can hover over things, you can see more detail. But what's typically unable for users to do is to change this. But what we've done is we've built in something that's gonna allow them, notice the hover, the same filtering of these. Say I wanna look at it by average rating title. Well, that changes up everything, the number of votes. How about the votes per title? So I can see that the number of titles America has the most, but when it comes to votes per title, it's not really leading the way. You know, it's changing up. So you can see that, and you can also just frame up that visual. Then finally, a table where you're gonna have bar charts, data bars, conditional formatting behind it, as well as calculations. We're gonna get into DAX too behind some of these things, but going through this tutorial, you will go from a blank canvas to this. It's gonna be an awesome journey. Let's go get into it. All right, chapter one, we're gonna get into the data. On the right-hand side, you'll see the final product which we'll iteratively get to, but the first step is gonna be ingesting the data. So you can see, firstly, this is well organized. We have listings, attributes, formatting, measures, modeling, as well as calculations. So on the right-hand side is the data, but to get to it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a blank canvas as well. And to do that, I'm gonna open up another file, but you're gonna to wanna to go to transform data and you'll be able to see the steps. Essentially, this data model has listings, which is bringing in the Netflix data. There's a calculations table that's blank that will allow us to organize our calculations. And then there's a dynamic or a static formatting table that will allow us to format groupings later on. So we're gonna build all of these. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go through this step and these processes, opening up a blank, Power BI file right here. So with this open, I'm gonna talk through how to build that data set that we're gonna need. And you can follow along this process. So what we're gonna do is, I'm going to Okay, so we have the blank canvas here. The first thing you wanna do is go to get data from Excel, because what, in the GitHub, there's gonna be a file, you're gonna to wanna to download the images, download the Excel data set, or my actually, yeah, an Excel data set, download that, the images, all the files. So we're gonna load those things in over time. But let's start with getting data. So what I always like to do is just go to the transform data tab first, open up this window, it's gonna be blank. New source, Excel workbook. Go to the place where you've saved that file, click open, open up Netflix listings. It's gonna bring it in, click on the listings uh, sheet, hit okay. What we're gonna do is, 
I'm gonna open up this one on another screen so I can kind of go through each step with you. So we have the files in here. What we wanna do is anytime you bring in data, the first thing to do is to delete things you just do not need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this step of change type and we're gonna get rid of columns we're not gonna use in this. The ID, we want that. The title we want, so let's go through that now. Popular rank, to remove a column, I like to just click right click, remove. Certificate, right click, remove. Start year, we're gonna keep it. We're gonna first remove columns, then we'll rename them, then set the data types. End year, we don't care, let's remove it. Episodes, we let's keep it. You might want it for later, just for fun. Uh, actually, episodes, remove it, we don't need it. Runtime, let's keep it. Type, keep it, we're gonna create additional columns off of that later on. Origin country, keep it. Language, let's just get rid of it. Plot, we're going to keep it. Summary, get rid of it, it's kind of duplicative. Rating, we're definitely gonna keep the rating. The votes, we're gonna keep that for sure. Genres, keep that, is adult. It's blank, it's just all zeros, so we don't really need it, it's worthless. Anytime you wanna analyze a column, I also like to go to view, turn on column distribution, column profiling, column quantity, quality. This is always gonna give me more attributes about any column. So I can quickly see, okay, I just don't need this column at all, it's not gonna add any value. Remove is adult, cast, we're not gonna use this information as well. Remove this, An image URL, we're definitely gonna keep that. So step one complete. We have removed the columns we're not gonna need. Now let's go through the process of renaming these columns so we want them to be called. Always name your columns friendly names. We're gonna go through that process next. So we're gonna change this to, this is an ID. This is the title. This is the start year. You put spaces in there, separate it out. Runtime. Type, origin country, I'm just gonna call this country. Plot, rating, definitely important. Votes, we can just call this votes. Genres, we're gonna change this later. You can see all the genres are stuffed together. Crime, drama, fantasy, stuffed together. We don't wanna have these things stuffed together. We're gonna to just pick the first one, call that what it is. We're gonna change that in a little bit as well. But for now, we can call it genres, multiple. Image URL, that's gonna be quite important, important for later on. So now that we have all this information, we have the basic column structures. These things are gonna be used to make our dashboard. And it's always important before you start building something that you dive in to understand what data is. So let's look at that now and make sure the data types are set up correctly. And the next step, an ID, well, this is gonna be a unique ID for every title. We want that to be text. Title, that's gonna be text. Start here, you can see this is kind of doing a numeric thing. We don't want that. We want it to be text as well. It will jump to the left-hand side showing it's text. We don't want them to add up years, but we want them to be grouped. Runtime, uh, this is gonna be, uh, this is an interesting step of cleansing. So we're gonna cleanse this data after we model it, but we'll come back to this column because what you see is runtime is a number. It should be 44 minutes, but this has an end, that's not a number. We can't add that up, so we'll get an error. We're gonna come back and fix that in a second. So let's come over here and keep renaming these or looking at these types, TV series. This is gonna be, is it a movie or is it a TV show? But you can see there's multiple columns. If you're interested, you can always click one, hit load more, it will show you all the options. We're gonna create a DAX calculation that's gonna group these. That will be helpful for you as well. But for now, we're gonna change this to text. Country, we know this is text. Plot, that's text. The rating, rating is gonna be something that's gonna aggregate. We want that, it's also a decimal number, so we're gonna turn it into a decimal number. Votes, this is a whole number. You're not gonna get half a vote, it's a full thing. So we're gonna do a whole number. Genre. This is text as well. Image URL, put this to text, and we'll eventually set this as well as another data type as a web URL or image URL later on. So we've set all the data types. 
Now, let's cleanse this data a little bit. We're gonna cleanse it by first coming to the runtime column and we're going to find and replace these slash ends. So come up here and very easily, you can see under the transform section, if you pick a column, you can choose to replace values, replace errors. So if you notice there's errors, you can simply put in a new value. You can click replace values. I wanna say if you find this thing, put a literal null value because it's empty, we don't have one. So now it's done that. That's gonna allow us now to change this to a whole number. So we've successfully done that. We're gonna filter out um, a couple of things as well. So sometimes when you have a data set, you want to exclude things that don't fit. And what I mean by that is uh, if your data isn't telling the story it needs to because of outlying information, remove it. It's kind of like a data science principle. Outliers, remove them. So in this case, as an example, if we go to uh, the type, you can see this distribution, and this is where the column profiling, it took a minute for it to populate, but it's extremely helpful. So we can see that nothing's empty. It always has a value, but there's some in here that we're just not gonna care about. So of all of these things, we don't care about video games. We don't care about uh, video and we don't care about shorts and we don't, don't care about um, null. So these videos, if they don't fit into this, if they don't have a genre or they don't have a type, they don't have, uh, or if they're a video, video game or a short, we're not gonna analyze them, we're not gonna pull them in. So we wanna stick with movies and TV shows. Hit okay. We've reduced the data set now to exclude those, which is great. The next thing we wanna do is also look at the ratings. So if we click the rating, and you can see at the column profile that 3% of them are empty. They don't even have a value. And this whole point of this dashboard is to analyze videos with ratings. So when you're building a dashboard and the key metric you're trying to analyze isn't applicable or available for some of the data, it's just gonna skew it. So don't use it uh, unless you need to count null ratings for some reason, but in this case, we don't need to. So we're gonna exclude values that do not have a rating. See you later for those as well as if we look at the country, when we're plotting out where these things are from, you can see there is a distribution of these blanks. If, it, if it's not, because we have a geo mapping and it matters to us, not just the ratings and the genre, but also where the movie was filmed. So if it's blank, we don't wanna, we're not gonna include it in this dashboard. So we're gonna exclude that as well. Again, this is the principle we're taking with this dashboard and the goal is to show you how you can prep a data set. The whole mission of this video is to go through what we've done for this Netflix analytics solution, but enable you to do this for any plethora of data you're using by using the fundamentals here. These are data prep fundamentals that you can use on any data set. So we're gonna exclude this as well. We've gone through that process. We've filtered the rows, we've excluded data. We have the data type set and the mapping set. So at this point, our data set, let me double check one thing. Yeah, it's our data set is set up. So this is the fundamental first part of formatting that data set. Next, we're gonna jump into the calculation part of building and organizing the data model. So let's go into that chapter. All right, the next step of this is gonna be the data model. So after we've prepped the data, on the right hand side, we're gonna organize the measures and we're gonna create measures and dimensions uh, as the following. So I'll go through each of these, we'll build them and I'll tell you what they're gonna do. So to do that, let's jump back into the basic one that we have now and we'll follow along. So I'm gonna move this.
All right, so now we're back at the base one and we've just loaded in that data from transform data and we brought that in. We hit close and apply. You load it in and we're looking at this now. But what we need to do is anytime you, you now import the data, you need to just look at the values and create new dimensions for it. So in this case, we're gonna build the data model for this thing. To start, what you can do is if you add a table and say, I wanna look at all the genres. This is not something we can analyze. Same with the type. If I click type, there's groupings of it. So we're gonna build some new measures that group these things together, doing it different ways to teach you different options for solving these problems. So we'll start why, by, if this is a listing, we're gonna create a listing type column. So to do that, we're gonna go to our listing sections, click new column. So when you think of new column on the right or new measure, a new column is gonna iterate through every row of the data set and tag a value to everything, every row. So use new column when we wanna add a new grouping to something. A new measure is like a calculation. It can be a number at the very top of everything aggregating. It's a different filter context. So with this, we're gonna make a new column and I'll make this, I'll zoom into this, make it bigger here. So for this column, we're gonna call it listing type. And our goal is to group, we'll do this real quick. Our goal, I'll move this. Our goal with this new listing type column is to group these into just movie or TV show, movie television. The easiest way to do that is with a switch statement. This is a very popular command or DAX uh, you can use. And so the way that it works, it's like an, it's like a if statement where you say, if it's, you know, this value TV episode, then put television and you kind of just go through the if process, if then. So anytime you start a switch, the kind of the standard way out, there's lots of different expressions you can use, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to say true. We're going to say, if what I'm about to tell you is true, then do it. And a good formatting thing is if you hit alt return, you can kind of separate these things out. So in this, I'm gonna again drag this down so I can see it. But if I go back into listing type, oh, I just lost what we had, so I'll type it again. Switch, alt return. I want true. So when I'm here, I'm gonna say, uh, if the listing type is in, do these semi brackets, multiple values. So in this case, I have them typed up over here. I'll put this DAX as well. You can just pull it from the file. You should be following along. But if you pick these values right here, movie, TV movie, then put the word movie, then put movie, alt return. So if this is true, if the listing type is movie or TV movie, put the word movie, we do the exact same thing and we say if the listing type is in TV miniseries, TV series, TV episode, TV special, TV short, then put television. Close this up, hit enter. And now what we've just done is if we add the listing type, you can see we've grouped everything. Now we have movie, television. This is gonna be very useful. So we're no longer gonna need that. So what we can do then is as we build these out, if you go to the model view, we can start to organize them. So the listing type, I'm gonna want that to be in a folder called attributes. And for now, this type column, I'll eventually hide it, but I'm gonna call it Z hidden. And the reason why is because I'm not gonna need it anymore. I'm not gonna look at that column. I'm gonna look at this new listing type column. So there's the listing type. <coughs> now let's do the genre. The genre is a little bit different. So what we can see from this genre is there, the first value is the action, or I'm sorry, the first value is what we're gonna label the genre as, though this data set has a comma in the multiple columns. So we're gonna use, build a DAX function 
that creates a new column called genre that just says, take everything before the first comma. <laughs> so to do that, we're going to uh, do the exact same thing where we're going to go to new column. And in this case, we're just going to call it genre. And so for the genre, I'll put this DAX, this DAX code in here and I'll talk you through it. So what this is saying is we're going to first take the left and the left is of a whole set of string. We're going to get the left number of characters. So as you can see here, we're going to dynamically create the length of how many characters to get the left. We're going to go to the genres. We're going to search that for the comma. So we're going to get the position of the first comma and that's going to give a number. So it will say this position, the comma is in the sixth position. Then we're going to add one to it and that is going to encapsulate all the values that are needed to create the genre. So what that looks like is this. So now I've just added that column and it very simplistically goes through. And again, if I, if I pull this down a little bit, <coughs> left listings, genres, find the first column from this field and then get the length of it, add one. And there you go. And so that's, and then it's gonna take the left of all those values. And that's how you get comedy, you get crime documentary. So this will be our genre. So we've successfully completed that. Now let's move, go back to the model view. Let's do the same organization. It's very important to keep your model organized. So we're gonna take genre and put it in the, the folder of Z. Oh, I'm sorry, this is gonna be attributes. You can see I have it selected here on the right. And now this multiple one, we're gonna go Z hidden. We'll eventually get rid of it. Organization, again, the fundamentals, we're going through this process and go through these steps. It's gonna lock it into your brain uh, for you to be able to do this with any data set you get. Now we have that completed. We're going to create one more thing. So if we look at the ratings, we can bring that back and say, we'll add title. What I've just done real quick is I've just created a table and to do that, you can click to a dimension and a measure and go up here and change and pick title. But I just simply brought back the rating for every title. And again, when you're creating this data set, always throw up tables. We're not even worrying about visualization yet. We're not worrying about that in product yet. We are thinking about it in our heads and the values we need to get there. Like we need a group genre. We need a listing type. So we're just building these to analyze the data, creating the model. What I want next is for the functionality of, I want to pick, I want to highlight everything that's a nine, everything that's an eight, everything in a range. Well, I want to build that as a hard coded value in this model. So to do that, we're going to use the switch statement again, and I'm going to make a new field. We're going to call it rating group, new column. And this is going to be another iterative switch statement. Switch statements are super popular. I use them all the time. And it's going to be, if this statement's true, then do it. That's just, that's how I just think about that one. Alt return and I'll paste this logic in and I'll talk through it. You can type it out yourself as well. And I just don't want to type all these things out over and over and over, um, for the sake of time. So I'll talk through it again, open up the DAX and look at this, but what this is doing, it's a simple, if then do this, if this is true, then do that. So listing rating, if the rating is greater or equal to zero and the listing is less than one, <clears throat> and then put that in the zero ranking. It's a very simplistic formula. Look at the rating, if it's greater than or equal to one, less than two, say that's a one. Two to three, two, the same process. Close the brackets on this thing, hit enter. Now if I close this, come back, I add the rating group. Look at that. 
I want to also do a couple of, uh, do something in this column. The rating group, as I click it, I want the summarization at the top. I don't want to add rating groups. I want it to be static. So we're not, we're going to say, don't summarize this thing. Data category, it's fine. We'll keep going through that. So what we've just done now is if I take this off and just add rating group, look at that. Now we have the rating group for everything we need. So let's do the same cleanup principle. Go to the model view. And we're going to say, put this rating group in attributes. And we'll still keep this rating because it's valuable. But what this is, this is a measure. A measure is something we add up. I'll add that in the calculations here in a minute. Let's keep going through these values on the right hand side. And now we've created the dynamic, uh, well, we've created the columns that we need, but let's make sure we have these data types set up properly. So if we come back to our report view, or we can actually hang out in the model view, that's just the same, but we'll go back to the report view. So the country, <laughs> this is going to be used for geo mapping. So you can kind of look by the symbols of these things to see how they're set up. And in this case, let's clear out some of these tables. I had the country. And what I'm going to want to do is under the formatting, oh, I'm sorry, the modeling, uh, home, where is that? Oh, I got to click the column. Country, column tools, data category. I want to say this is a country, not a county, but get that R in there, country. Now you can see I've set this up for geolocating. That will be good for our, our mapping later on. And what we do always is just go through all the fields you have and make sure that they're set up correctly. So again, the ID, let's organize that one. Well, the image URL, uh, that one's set up properly. You know, the ID is good. The image URL, if you come here, you can see, all right, the same category. I want this to be an image URL. Done. So that's exactly what we need. Now let's go back to the grouping of this thing. Country, attributes, ID, we're going to put this in a folder called modeling. The ID might be used for joins, it could be used to pulling up, but it's not like a key attribute of something that we really care about right now. Plot, this will be an attribute. Uh, runtime, this is another measure, how long something's running, it's an aggregating factor. The start year, this will be an attribute. Title, this is an attribute as well. Votes, this is a measure. And look at this. We have one thing that's missing, the image URL. We'll put this into modeling. So now we've organized our data model. We have hidden things that we'll eventually get rid of. Modeling, an ID and image URL. The measure, which is a rating that can go up and down the runtime and the number of votes. So let's We'll look at those next, the calculation part of this thing, but we've set up the data types for all the attributes as well. The title, the start of the group. We've built all the data and organized all the data we're gonna need in this now. So let's start on the next chapter of this thing with the calculations in the data model. The next section of this chapter, the calculations. So what I always like to have is a calculation section up here. It's a way to organize calculations for the end user and for yourself to kind of pull them without having to go into these subfolders. So I use this on all the things I create. And what you want to do, it's a little trick. Hit enter data. It's going to pop up a new table. So we're going to make a new table that's going to have no data in it, but all of our calculations will live there. So what I mean by that is we're going to do that, hit load. Now you'll see on the top right hand side, a new calculation table has been created. And actually this changed, I like, I like to make it sure it's plural, calculations. So what do calculations look like? We're gonna have a plethora of things in here. If you look at the actual file, you'll see there's totals, <coughs> excuse me, um, for the movies and TV shows. So let's start by doing what we need for some of the basic measures down here, where we're gonna make a new measure, not a column this time, and the measure, we'll call this votes. We'll call the, I like to do the number sign to say this is a count of votes, number of votes. So all that's simply going to be, it's going to say sum up the votes. 
done. So now if you will keep this right here as an example, so we can test the calculations. These are the listings of the countries. If I add the votes, oh, well, that doesn't work because I changed the geo mapping of it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we'll just create a normal table and we'll do the titles. So we have all the titles and we're going to add the votes. So what we notice is they're just a whole bunch of numbers without commas. So anytime you create a new calculation, we always want to make sure to add the right formatting. In this case, a number of votes will be a whole number that has a comma in it. That's great. Now we'll do the rating and what we'll do to, to make sure these things are aggregating correctly is let's use our new genre. So here's all our genres. We'll add the number of votes and let's keep going. So we want to know the average rating now for these. Again, if you just add the rating measure, that doesn't make any sense. We want to know the average of all the ratings that are within any genre. So we're going to create a new calculation and this will be the average rating and we want to do the average of the rating. If we add this into here, uh, there you go. Now we have the average rating, but what we want is we want this to be a decimal number and we only want it to be one decimal place, 6.6. .6. Now we have the average rating created for anything uh, that's needed there. We'll call this the same way it's labeled in actual model, average rating. And we'll do a couple of other things. So we're gonna to need to know the total number of titles. So what we can do for that is we'll make a new calculation, a new measure. This will be called number of titles. And for this, we're gonna do a distinct count and that counts everything that's a unique or distinct value of that ID column that we saw down here. So every ID had a listing that correlates to a title. So let's do the count of titles. And what this is going to be is, again, this is going to be a whole number that we want to have a comma with. So we have the comma added, always formatted afterwards. We can get rid of this, uh, this column that we don't need anymore, delete this from the model and we'll create the other master kind of calculations. So actually for right now, these are the core ones and we'll build the other ones as we develop additional visuals. So we can build them on the fly. But for now, we'll put this, we'll just leave these calculations where they are in the groupings. And what we've just done is we've built the, the data model that's gonna be foundational for this. And we'll add to it and iterate to it over the course of time, as we build different visuals, we'll add a table, we'll add more calculations, but now you've built the foundation. So what the next video is going to be is just going to the first visual, adding a few more things to the model and building the, the presentation layer. So let's get to it. Let's go to the next chapter. All right, we're back on the dashboard. So we've built the data model after we've prepped all the data. So we're going to start doing the fun stuff now. We're gonna start creating this presentation layer from scratch. So what we're literally gonna do, on the right hand side you can see from our previous videos, we have the listings and attributes and some extra columns over here. We'll add those during this process, as well as the calculations we create are now in a bucket called zero total. So you can move those there if you want. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this. We're gonna start by literally making a new tab. We'll call this the lab tab. What the lab tab is gonna be is a back and forth process to make something over here that's on this screen. So for example, the first thing that I always like to do is maximize the amount of data that can fit on a page. And the ratio of the canvas helps to do that. So you can see by default, it's set to 16 by nine, but actually this dashboard it's custom. The canvas is 1080 by 1920. You can you notice that's kind of the dimensions that are on many screens out there. It's the same ratio, but uh, larger, so you can form, fit more information. So we're gonna change this. And in this section of the video, what we're gonna do is set up the canvas. So we're gonna get the gradient background you see there, 
and the logo and the formatting of the blank lab tab canvas. And that will complete this section. Then we'll jump around this dashboard to the varying charts and build those. So the lab tab, we're gonna set that to 1080, 1920 as well. So to do that, canvas settings, uh, custom, height, 1080, width, 1920. And if you're curious to see how that actually can help, if I come back to this and say add a table, I'll click table and we'll go attributes, genre, total, titles. <clears throat> you can see this visual here. But now if I go to click anywhere off and click the canvas to go to custom, again, 1080 by 1920, well, that just got a lot smaller. And that's intentional because we're going to fit way more stuff on this table now. And the canvas is set up. So there you go. So now with the lab tab, we're not going to use too much of the filter pane. So I'm going to knock that out. But within the filter pane, it's great to format that. A lot of people forget about it or don't mess with it. In this case, we're going to do a very simplistic thing. We're going to set this thing to black. So for the you click on the filter pane on the right hand side, you have formatting options. We're going to set the background to black and the text to white. Easy as that. We won't even really go back there, but it's just the details of everything you do matter. So what you're going to notice is if we just go to the canvas background and set that to be black, uh, transparency zero, <clears throat> we're going to get something that looks like this. Well, we want to have, if we flip back over, this cool gradient. The subtleness of these gradients and the, the background and the design of a dashboard really matters. They all add up to create a very impressive picture. So how do you do that? Well, there's not a setting in Power BI to do that. But guess what? All these Power BI products or the Microsoft products work extremely well together. So what you do, anytime you think of backgrounds, open up PowerPoint. And what I did, and I attached this file in the GitHub as well, if you want to reference the specific settings, but you just create a gradient. So to do that, I'll make a new tab, delete everything. And I just spent some time playing with different colors. So I first just did a gradient fill. And well, I just copied what I did earlier. But if you pick a gradient fill, and you can slide these bars, you can see the colors kind of moving, where do you want it to move? You can click on a color to change it, change how you want it to go, change the angle, where is it on the page? You can see it moving around different spots. Set up whatever gradient you want. I intentionally put this in the top left because uh, over here it's kind of the logo. Your eye goes Netflix, corner, top left, awesome. I didn't want the gradients to be over here kind of getting lost in the busyness. So I intentionally put it in the top left corner. You can do the same, but all you need to do then is save that, take it as take a picture of it, and uh, load it in. So I've already done that, and you simply want to add that as a background. So you can go to browse, and you can see uh, the images. So we'll have other symbols and things we'll add to, but I'll just click the background, open, and it's just saved as a file. There you go. But it doesn't fit. It's too short. It doesn't fill the whole thing. So you always need to go to image fit it. And there we go. Now we have that same background. If we come back over here, uh, what we can also do is you'll notice very subtly, but this white little line here. So there's the wallpaper and then there's the background. The wallpaper is what's behind the canvas. So I like to set that black as well. Now let's add the logo. What I originally had was a, uh, to put on any image, I went to you know Netflix, it was analyzing them, I got their, their image, their logo, and you can go to their visual section, I'll put a link to it uh, in the description, and you can actually download their logo. So I did that, and uh, I needed to remove the background. So there's another free tool you can use, I'll put the link in the description as well, uh, where you can remove the background of a logo. So to insert an image, you go to insert image, Go to the same one. I'll insert both of these so you can kind of see. The first one came like this. And obviously that's not going to work for the detail, detail that I'm trying to do because 
I need uh, to have a transparent background. So I got the image, put it into an uploader, removed the background and trimmed it up. And to do that then I came with this title, which you can see works out much better. So we have our, our Netflix image there, transparent background. And uh, I'll put a link for how to uh, use that website as well. It's very simple, you go to it, click browse, put your photo in there, it will take the background out, you save it and you're done. So the lab tab, what we've successfully done is set the foundation for the design of this, of this thing. We have uh, the background set up, the filter pane set up, and the Netflix, lo Netflix logo in the top left hand corner. So with that, the next thing we're gonna do is we'll move on to the, uh, the number of titles by rating group. All right, let's go. Let's pick up where we left off and build the funnel chart. That's on the top left-hand corner here. The point of this chart is it's gonna allow us to use that new category, rating category group that we created to segment all the titles and filter them. So it's a way, what you do when you're building dashboards is you wanna just say, how can I build something that's interactive to allow filtering, but at the same time present information? Sure, we could have just added a filter that says pick number 987654, but we want to actually show more than just that so they can have some intuition or information around why to choose something. So what we're going to do back and forth through these processes is I'm going to copy a visual, put it on the lab tab, and zoom into it, and we're going to recreate it. So in that, that case, that's the logo. But for over here, I'm gonna copy this visual, put it on the lab tab, make it bigger, and we're just gonna build the same thing. So some important things, first if I go back to rating analytics, why it's important again, is maybe I wanna use this to say, okay, I can see there's 355 number fours, well what are they? All right, it's these videos, rating 4.9, number of votes, we'll get into those sections as well. But now we can see by every genre, sci-fi is the most, family, you can organize all this stuff. So that's the intent and the reason for the funnel chart. And we're gonna go through how to make it look this, look this nice. Because you'll see there's so many subtleties of the font color changes. It goes from black to white. That's not a normal feature. You have to conditionally set that up. As well as there's a, a bat, the, black, the background but then the overall formatting of it. So you can see it's very clean. So let's start the process of creating this. So the first thing you do is you go to insert waterfall chart. Put it down there. I'm gonna put it right up here next to it. Make it big as well. <clears throat> and we're gonna to wanna to add the data. So what we know is this is really analyzing the number of titles by the rating group we created. There you go. So that, there's a lot of steps to go. And that's why this tutorial is going to equip you so well, where this is the default visual to get this to that. Let's go. So I, kind of a, a, an important thing of funnel charts is they actually can be used in distribution to show the percentages as they narrow down. So we're kind of using it in a different method than what they're originally intended to. But that creativity is what it's all about. So firstly, I'm not interested in knowing what's the most and then the subsections of it, which is typically how a funnel chart works, why it's defaulted to this way. I actually wanna know and see it by category. So it's not currently set up to order the right way. So let's first set the orientation. We're gonna to go to the three dots. We're gonna sort this by the rating group. Easy as that. Okay, now we have the rating group sorted. Let's keep going through this thing. The way that you go through any visual, you click on it, and I mean, this is where we're at all the time in this formatting pane. So first with the conversion rate, that's gonna to equate to this. We don't need to see that. Let's turn that off. We don't care about the conversion rate. We care about what's in the story we're telling. So we'll work through this. And firstly with the size and style, we know it's a big white background. Well, we don't want that. We don't need any background. Turn it off. Okay, now let's bring forward the things we need from the size and style. So specifically the title. I, on the right hand side, I click title. I'm gonna select all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this what it's doing. Number of titles 
by rating group. Done, I can't see it, okay? So let's make it white. Move it to the center, make it bold. That's clean, that's fresh. Number of titles by rating group. All right, well, when you look at this, the bars tell a story, but not everything. So let's, let's we'll, we'll get to the data labels in a second. We'll keep working through this process. But uh, we know we have the title and the background set up now, so we can close those sections. Let's keep moving. So size and style is set up correctly. We'll come to colors last, because that's going to be a really cool part, a little bit more work there. It's very valuable in how to use tables to do the conditional formatting. So let's talk about the category labels. What are these? These are the things on the left-hand side, 987. We want them. Yes, yeah, so if we turn them off, it goes away. I don't know what's what, so I don't want to do that. I want them to be white and bold as well. Good. Now I can see those. So let's start going into the data labels. Well, 2K, 2K, that's not granular enough. I don't want to, I almost never, unless it's a space concern, which you'll see in some of the KPI visuals coming up, uh, set the values to display units auto. I always like to do none. Show me the whole thing. Now we have the 713, each of these values. Okay, that's great. Now the fun part. Let's set up the uh, background of these things. But before we do that, we, wanna, we want to change the data labels background. So we want it to be on. And what I like to do for the background, doesn't matter what the visual is, is I usually pick a color and make it slightly transparent. So in this visual, I chose white 64. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the background, pick white 64%. That's cool because what that does is it's kind of like if it's already dark, it's still got a dark vibe to it. Uh, if it's light, it will have a light vibe to it. And that helps a lot. That works really well. But now let's go, turn that back to 64. Let's get to the data label portion of this thing um, with the colors. So we'll start with the bars. You'll notice some things aren't showing up. That's okay. We'll get to it. We'll, fi we'll fix that stuff up. So let's do the colors. Well, over here, you can see that the conditional formatting is dynamic. There's a function and it's saying use the first fill color. That's pulling from a table. <laughs> so this will be the place in the tutorial where we're gonna create a data table that houses values. What that looks like is if we go back to home, transform data, you're gonna see that I made this table called Z group formatting. And to do that, you simply hit enter data. You'll have a blank table. You can make some columns. I believe I did rating group, fill group, and I just renamed them. I'm, I'm not fully naming them here now because they're there, but you do that and I'll cancel it. If we go back to it, home, transform data, you can see that what I did is create a table with that method called the first column rating group, fill color and font color. How in the world did I get these fill colors? Well, I'm gonna show you. There's a link in the description as well to a website which helps build gradients. It's pretty awesome. And so what I did was I took the red from the N in Netflix and a white. And I said, build a 10 layer gradient and it does it, and it spit out these fill colors. Check out the link in the description, and you can go to the website and do it. So I simply did a process of copying each one and pasting it into the fill color section. The darkest being the nine, as I want that red to be more prominent and rich, saying signifying fuller for ratings that are higher, and less or lighter for ones that aren't. And then the font color is set up uh, by me deciding what looks best of a black font over a lighter background and a white font over the darker background. And that inverse relationship uh, creates the visual that we need. So you create that table, 
And then you simply link it in the data model. You can see that based upon the rating group, well, I want to link that so you can just click it and drag it to the rating group, which it already does. And it's going to say for every rating group, now bring in the fill color and the font color. If you have any questions about that, ping me, I'll help you. But what we can do now is on this visual for the color, we want it to be dynamic. So we want to say, okay. And if you want to see how this actually can look, we'll just go this way. So we click conditional formatting. We want a rule. The rule says whatever the field, I'm sorry, we want the field value for the new calculator or the table, the Z rating group table, the fill color, the first value. So it's going to group it and bring back that first value. Hit OK. And look at that. Now that nice gradient is transcending all of those values and it looks very, very sharp. So let's keep going to the data label section now. So there's some options here. And firstly, for the values, I want those to be bold. And I think it's a little bit bigger over here. Yeah, 10. So size 10. But we need to make sure that their font is changing as well. So if I click the visual on the left, and again, when you're doing this, have this lab tab open, go back and forth between each visual. That's going to help you understand and just look at the settings. So you can follow along with this. The lab tab, you follow along. So let's change this font color as well. And I'm going to click this. We're going to do the same process for the field value. It's going to be based on the font color that I set up in that table and click OK. And there you go. Now look at that. We have a white font uh, coming down to a black font and it transcends those values. It just looks so good. And we've built the funnel chart. So now when we're over here, this section is complete. You can build this, the number of titles per rating group for the lab tab, action complete. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna dive in to the awesome reference cards. This is going to be a very cool section. So let's go. We've completed the funnel chart. We're moving on to this awesome new reference card. So again, we have the lab tab. Let's go back to what we had. We're going to delete it. The whole purpose of the lab tab is for us to follow along. So open the sucker up. In this section, we're going to know everything about this new reference card visual. So let's copy this, paste it in the lab tab. Let's make it bigger. There's lots of space there. Again, we'll, we'll adjust the spacing later on. I'll do this just so we have a reference. We'll copy this. We'll do the lab tab. We'll copy again. We'll make this one even bigger. Just so we can see everything that's happening. And we'll make a new one. So this reference card is so cool. As you can see, uh, you can add images. It just looks sharp with the accents and the subtleness between the, divis the division of the first callout value and the reference labels, as well as the details. So what are these saying? It's saying here are the total number of units or titles, 5,500, the average rating, the total number of votes. Then the other KPIs segment those out to say movies, the average rating for those, uh, and then the number of votes, so 74 million. But what's cool, and we'll get into this, is you can see that the formatting is actually different for this, where it shows only 74 million, but it is condensed because we add in additional detail that says, this is 64% of the votes, 74 million is 64% of 115 million, as well as that averages 28,011 votes per title. Getting all this in this KPI card is so cool, it's so new. So we're gonna build it right now. Let's do it. And what you do is start with the new card. And you can see it's blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this actually up so you can kind of have a left and right view of things. Let's move this over here. And we'll start. So anytime you start building with these KPI things, we want to add KPIs to them. And to do that, we're going to have to create a few things you haven't created yet. So what I know at the first, the top level is I'm going to want to know the number of titles. 
You can see that will correlate to that. But I also need to know the number of movies and TV shows. We haven't created those measures yet, so we can do that now. The way that you'll do that is in this calculation section, open up the file. You can look at these things and reference them. It's a repetitive calculation. So movie titles, what it's doing is using the calculate function to say, calculate the number of titles, but filter the data set for the listing type that equals movie. It's very straightforward. Make a new measure that, that you do that, you call it that, you type in the same calculate and you can go through the process of creating that exact same calculation. And through our previous step of how to organize it, then after you create it, you can go to the table view, this account view, and organize it. So you can see I'll have that calculation under a section called one dot movie, and you'll do the same thing with TV titles under two dot TV. So go through that process, look at each of those calculations, and create them in your file. Again, movie titles. <clears throat> It's going to return the value for each movie. TV titles does the same thing, calculate the number of titles for all the listing types of television. And uh, let's add those. So when you click the visual again, you're going to want to add that data for the number of movies and the number of TV titles. <coughs> so here we have a KPI visual. Now, we got to do some formatting in this thing and bring in more data to it. So the first thing we're going to see is, well, we don't want this white background. I always start with the framing of, of what a visual looks like and then go into the guts of it. So what we know is with this card visual, these are the, the major categories of it. The size, the title. We don't need a title. We're going to get into the size. The shape, round and quarters, we'll get into that. The layout, uh, which is, you know, the space between cards, subtle things like that, which we'll tweak. The callout value is going to be the major value here. A reference label, we're going to build all of these things, by the way, are going to, is going to be what's below the callout value, this detail here, which will have a reference value and then another detail section below it, as well as an image, which we put up here for Netflix, equating to this is the whole plethora of stuff. And then overall formatting of the cards. So we'll go through the process now to build this. Size and style. Well, the background, we don't need a background. Turn this off. We can always go back and forth too to kind of look at small differences. Again, the height and things aren't going to be precise, but that's okay right now because you're learning how to build it. But the background's off. <clears throat> the shape, this is such a subtle thing I do. It's everything. Rectangle, rounded rectangle. <clears throat> that's too much. I like the number five. Boom. Just a slight little tweak. It just softens it a little bit, still keeps everything together. What you're gonna notice is the cards are more space and they're kind of floating and we want that. So to do it, we're gonna jump down to the card section. This is saying, how do we filter the whole card itself? And we're gonna get into more detail, but at first we don't need a specific series. We're not interested in just the title card, just the movie card, just the TV card. We're gonna do everything. And so we wanna have for everything we do want to have an accent bar. We're going to turn that on. Let's expand that. And we're going to choose the Netflix red. But it starts to be default on the left hand side. I'm going to move that to the top and set the width to like 10. I think it's 10 is what I did. And I mean, that just those subtle differences, you can make this a conditional formatting as well. I have another video where I show that red's good, green's bad, and you can get into the details of this accent stuff, but it's really cool just to help bring out some information for it. But now let's turn on both the shadow and the glow. This is where now the card will start to kind of have that more card vibe to it. If we look up here, you can see we have the shadow and glow on as well. And what we want to do is set this to white, outside, shadow, white, outside, bottom right. Very subtle. All right, let's keep going. And so now for the card itself, we can choose to first fill in this background. So we'll do that by with the card, 
for all the fill, but we're going to want it to be gray. And the specific gray, I'll come up here real quick. This, all these threes. All right. As you can see, when we make things a little bit darker, the color and the highlights start to show a little bit more. So those things will always keep tweaking as you change the colors. This is now the section of the card itself that contains the callout value. And let's keep formatting this section first. So what we notice is we, let's start with the callout value. This is the callout to every series. Well, we don't want it to be black. We want that font to be white. <clears throat> also, as a standard, turn off display units auto. Show the full number. Done. Now we can customize the titles of these things because you can see by default, and this is where you get into the series editing. So I intentionally chose to make some tweaks where you change things overall as a whole, but then also per title. So after you click call out, you can go to a series and of the three series we've built, we can select them and they equate to if I pick just titles, now I'm only changing things in this title card. So you can change if you want to, you know, the colors, the formatting of individual cards. In this case, we're going to, we're going to change the label. So you can see the label is currently set to auto. We don't want that. We want this to be called movies and TV shows. Cool. We want that to be white. Great. Let's keep making these changes. So we're going to go to the movie titles <clears throat> tab. We're going to set that label to movies. We want that to be white. We're going to change this one to TV shows. Again, going from the data centric names to the user friendly names, number of TV shows to literally TV show is, is makes way more sense for the end users. So we have that finally up in this section, we want to add an image. So the same way that we have that logo that we added up here in the top left hand corner, you, I downloaded the N from the Netflix logo site and simplistically you can just add it into here. It's also in the files that we provided in the GitHub. So download that too. But what you can do is for an image, you can add an image to all of them or just one. So in this case, I intentionally add it to just one because I want that N to subliminally signify it's both movies and titles. It's, it's everything Netflix. I was thinking about adding other icons for like movies and TV shows. I only found cheesy ones. Maybe you can find ones that look better. If you do, let me know. Movies and TV shows. So I'm going to turn on for the title of titles or the series of titles. I want to add an image and now I can go to browse to the place where I have everything. And I have this Netflix symbol. Well, that doesn't fit. <clears throat> That's super big. It doesn't work. Every time that comes up, image fit, put that sucker to fit. And now position it to the left hand side. But still what you can see here is let's put these things, let's make sure the height is the same. I want them to be mirrored up. because I'm going to show you some formatting stuff. Height 160, 176, height 176, uh, width 907, width. All right. So what you're going to notice here is that N is much smaller. I want that sucker to be bigger and kind of fill up all the space that's right next to this labeling. So to do that on the image section, you can change the size by clicking up and also decreasing the padding. So in this, I have it set up, keeping the padding at four point, but then the size is 65. And again, it will change. Things will move around and shuffle as they make additional changes, uh, which we'll get to. But this allows you to change the size of that image. Also, if you wanted less padding, you know, you can move things closer, kind of get things tighter, depending upon your space restrictions, what you're working with. We're, mo we're making progress. All right. So we have the top section of this KPI built now with an image, with an accent, with glowing, with separation. It's looking a lot better. Let's keep going. 
into the next step of the reference label portion. So again, just to help, I'm going to make this bigger. Uh, we'll do this, undo that. We'll keep it the same, actually. I think it just looks better the same. So we have this set up. What we're going to do now is if we click this on the right hand side, go to reference labels, you can see nothing's there. So what in the world is the reference label all about? This is where you're going to add additional information. It's going to show up in that section below. So for this, on the right hand side, I create a few extra measures. Firstly, one that's not extra is the average rating. So for all of these, we have the average rating already. On the top left, you can see average listings rating that we already created previously. But then go through the process of doing the same thing we did earlier, where you just do calculate the average rating. Here, I'll make this bigger. Calculate the average rating filter for just the type of movie. Oops, that's way too small. Or the TV rating type television. So what that looks like in a table is again, if say we have, um, we'll do the same splitting by listing type. And if I do number of votes, I kind of like sometimes to have a table on the left hand side uh, that just helps me as I'm working with this stuff. Uh, so we have number of titles. Move this up. <clears throat> so we can see right here, Five five. We'll zoom in a little bit. Five five zero one. That matches there. But let's make these additional columns so we can get the story more. And the zoom in helps. I'll keep things zoomed in for now, guys. That's that's going to be really helpful. I'll delete this too. And so we have to add these extra things. So what that looks like is you need to actually create a calculation that filters on what you need. So in this case, I created something that's the movie average rating, which you can see I just talked about the TV average rating, and it's just showing up specifically for that. So make these calculations and then to add them and to use them, if we go back to the reference label section, I'm going to choose the series of title. And for this card, I want to have the additional detail of the average rating and the number of votes. Well, you can see things aren't fitting and that's expected. <clears throat> and so we're gonna fix that. And again, it comes, that's a very important part of the subtleness of how to build and use these things is you need to get detailed with the tweaking of the formatting of this stuff. So firstly, it's gonna be a lot of padding. Anytime you see things moving around like that, it's all about the padding. Uh, so we'll, we'll, before we do those quick tweaks, we'll just add those same values to these cards down here. So we keep that process going while it's fresh. I go back to reference labels. I'm going to go to movie titles. I'm going to drag in the movie average rating as well as then the movie votes. The movie votes is doing the same thing, calculating the number of votes, filter on the listening type movie, same formula repeating itself. TV shows, <clears throat> select the series, pick TV titles. I'm going to go pick the number or the TV average rating, add that to the label, as well as the votes. And again, there's more information, there's detail, we're going to get to that. But first, let's just make sure all this stuff fits up the same way we expect it to. So right now it doesn't. So let's change that. So we're going to start by setting up this divider line. So within a reference label section, within the reference label section, you'll see that if you just go down to the divider, it's grayed out. Well, why is that? Because I, in order to apply divider, you have to select the series of all. We're gonna apply this to everything. And now I can go to the divider, choose the color. We'll choose this lightest color, make it a little bit thicker, make it stand out. I think in this one, I have three point, I'll do this one three point as well. So we have the divider line, but now let's change some of the layout, some of the spacing. So this outer padding 12 point, well, that's just so much. You can see if I start to decrease it or increase it, it's bringing things closer together. I have it set up here as four. 
Space between labels, one point. I don't need, you, this changes the amount of space between the reference labels. I just want this one, I want things more compact. I wanna maximize the space of what I'm using here. But you can still see that now in the top section, there's more space. So how do we get rid of that? What's going on there? Well, let's look at it. So in that section, that section is called the callout section. Um, well, first, let's look at the left to right spacing. So if I click here, you can see space is set to zero. These are a little bit wider. This is just dead space. I want to use them. So in the layout section, I can decrease the space to cards to zero. So now those are more aligned with each other. And uh, let's work on formatting this callout section. So when I go to the callout section, on the right hand side, you can see there's values. We're not interested in that. Uh, we've already gone through a lot of those, those sections, but you can see there is spacing. It's grayed out though, we can't control it, why not? Because we have the series set for TV, we have to pick all. It's gonna apply to everything. This is where now we can decrease that vertical spacing, moving things closer together. For this one, I set it to zero. Bring that sucker close, we don't need all the spacing. <laughs> now look at that. Now we have more compact uh, a, a more compact visual. Specifically, if we go back to size and style, the height is 177. I'll set this to 177 as well. It's a little off, and that is coming from, I think, the spacing right down here now. So how do we tweak that out? Let's look at it. Open this up just a little bit. If we keep going, you'll see title. We don't need a title the layout, space between cards, call out, we already have that. Oh, it's the font size, my font sizes are bigger. So it's already messing things up that way. I, we're gonna dive into the reference label section. That's why. So what we're gonna do is if we go to the reference labels now, let's set the overall formatting for those. So up here, uh, I can see that the series or the values uh, are all set to 9.6 for the reference labels. I think that's actually the same size, 9.6. So that's good, so that stays. So let's keep just going through the process of now how to tweak the formatting of these sections. Well, what we can see in the top is the average rating is red. <clears throat> so it helps stand out very intentionally. You can see that number. So what we can do is, and also it's not abbreviated. It says average rating for every every part of every reference label, it doesn't say the movie and these data terms. So we're gonna update that as well. So we're gonna go to the reference, lab reference labels, apply settings, we're gonna start with titles. We're gonna select a label. We're gonna pick average rating. We want this to be called custom. We're gonna call it average rating. I'm just gonna copy this. We're gonna do it to all the other ones as well. <laughs> movie titles, the uh, title, select the label, movie average rating, content, custom, average rating. We just changed that one. We're going to do the same thing again. Again, the repetitiveness is key to help burn this into you. Select the series, TV, select the label, average rating. We're going to not, we're going to call it average rating. Good. Now, while we're here as well, we can go through each of these and say we want the value to be bold and red, 7.2. So we'll do that same process. We're gonna go back to the movie titles, come down to value, and say we want that to be red, bold. We're gonna go also to the title section, pick red, bold. Oops, I changed the title. We don't want to change that. We're going to come back. Black, unbold it. <clears throat> We're going to go to the value. Bold. Red. Awesome. So we've, com we've completed that average rating section. Now we want to do the same first the title. Where you can see this is called number of votes. But this is movie votes, TV votes. We want just to be mo number of votes. So we're going to go to the title section again. Sorry, movie titles. Pick a label. In this case, we're going to be looking at the movie votes label. The title is going to be custom. We're just going to call this number of votes. 
Now the TV shows is make the same quick change. TV titles. We're going to change this to TV votes. Field name, custom, number of votes. Just change that to number of votes. All right, so what we notice is we're going to add detail, which we'll get to in a minute, and that will take up more space, but we can maximize how this is formatted. So if we go to the titles tab and or the title KPI card for the label of votes, I want this to be the value that is red and bold as well but also the display units, none. I wanna show the full thing. So there you go, seeing the full thing that way. Let's keep going to now the detailed section. So first for the movies, we're gonna pick the movie and our goal now is to finish the formatting of this to then include the detail and the redness. So first movie titles, well we want the value to be red, bold, but it's gonna have some detail. So now this is a cool DAX calculation I created. I will, uh, again, put it in, uh, when you have the file, bring that up so you can see it. But what it is, it's the movie votes label as well as the TV votes label. So what this is doing, I'm gonna zoom in. <clears throat> That's gonna be this right here, is you have two variables. So the first variable is the percent of total, where I'm just saying divide the total number of movie votes by, the to by the, all the votes so I can know the percentage of votes that are for movies. And then uh, round that to two, multiply by 100 to get, to get that whole number. Then the, the uh, votes per tile, we're gonna divide the number of movie votes by the number of movie titles to get the number of votes per title. And then we do some additional formatting where it's gonna give you a number that's longer. We wanna round that to zero to create a whole number. But then most importantly is the formatting of it. We want it to also have a comma for it to be if it's longer. So you can see that there's a comma included with this format DAX function. Then finally, uh, you can return it because within these cards, you can't change the formatting of things individually. You can't say 64 and then put a percent and put a comma here. You have to do all that in the calculation itself. So Power BI is smart enough where if you've created these values, then you can create text around it to, to have it connect. What I mean by that is I'm saying put a, a parentheses on the left-hand side, parentheses and a percentage on the right-hand side of the percent of total, so it's getting number 64, putting a percentage there and then putting a bar and then a space. And then the number of votes per title to 28,000 and putting the text votes per title. So you can create that DAX measure. And now when you're here, what you can do is for the reference label. And again, this is important to apply because you can use this for any data set, anything that you're building. And you need to get into this level of, of information with this card. You're gonna be able to do it now. Reference labels, movie titles. I'm gonna go and pick detail. Turn this sucker on. You can see it's blank. But what I'm gonna do is say for movies, I wanna add this new movie votes label. Boom, 64%, it's showing there. Make that italic. I'm controlling the detail. I'm controlling the font and the formatting of that detail layer, as well as now, I'm gonna do the same thing for the votes. Come back up here, select a series, TV titles, votes, and detail, turn it on. Pick my votes label, add that, make it italic. You've just built a card all the way through which just looks incredible. Now, how does that work? Well, if you go back again, the whole point, let me zoom back out of this now, is what these cards can do. If you click anything, it's gonna tell you information about it on the spot. If I click this six, it's gonna show me the average rating for movies, average rating for TV shows, the number of votes, tiles per vote. If I click Portugal, you know, if I pick multiple countries, it's gonna show that. So you always have those KPIs at the top. It's a great way to first start telling the story. So. 
with this lab tab, we have built the visual that looks so sharp for the new card slicer or the card KPI card. Up next on the lab is we're gonna get into this cool table on the right hand side that has all the images. So we'll jump into that, let's go. Next up is we're gonna dive into this table with images. This thing is super cool. Now again, you always have to tell yourself, what's the point of it? Well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring that first, that visual eye-catching element that says, here's every title, here's the cool picture of it, the plot, and then you can sort by it. So maybe over here, I want to say, okay, well, what movie has the most votes of all time? This one does. What has the least? This one. What about the rating? Best, Stranger Things, least. There you go. Now we can get into the filters as well. So say I say TV shows only, or even let's do movies only. We can do the same thing, and maybe I only care about the number sixes. So I can see, again, here's the detail level. So when we're building dashboards, the design, you always want to think of how do we go from top down where I can see if there's thousands of units aggregated, what is the certain characteristics of the individual components of that. So we're gonna build that today on this tab. So let's take it to the lab tab. I'm gonna copy this, and I'm also gonna copy this filter. I'll copy both of these. Go to the lab tab, paste it, don't sync. All right, so on the left-hand side is what we want. On the right-hand side is what we're gonna build. Let's do it. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is insert a table. Again, this whole tutorial is showing you all the key visuals, how to use them to get the desired results you want. But we're gonna have two tables. So we're gonna have this table and then a second table. Um, that This one contains images, the other one contains bars, conditional formatting. So you're gonna just really have that mastered. Now, firstly, we're gonna bring back every column we want. This very simply first is from our data modeling, we want the title. Oops, it also just adds a table by default but we're gonna do title. And uh, because Power BI is just awesome, but we set this up in the data modeling layer very well by conditionally, or by setting the data type, the image URL in this data set, it's gonna pull the image. Simply click it, now we have the image. We need to make it look better, but it's bringing in that image, and we'll get to how to do that. Again, you wanna have the things that we're sorting on, so we have the average rating, and the number of votes. Those are our processes. And what happens so often is people create a table. These have the same data components. The one on the left looks so much better than the one on the right. By taking an additional 15 minutes of formatting, you game change how your data looks. So it very much matters how things look. If people look at something that doesn't look good, it almost devalues their trust in it, though it's the same data. So let's go through the process of how to format this to make it look just like that. All right, firstly is the background. We don't need this thing white, and let's start there. So if you click a visual, there's always gonna be the size and style, and varying columns or varying categories of things we can change on the visual. It's the repeating process of everything through Power BI. So in this case, the background, turn it off. Easy as that. Things kind of shrunk down. You notice that the columns just changed. So something I always like to do is column headers, options, auto size to width. Don't do that. Let me set the size of these things, and I'll I'll be the I'll be in control. You don't need to control a Power BI. Cool. So we've done that. Uh, now let's go back up to the basic formatting of this thing, and we don't need a title. It's intuitive what's contained in here, but we do need to start using this stuff. So when we go to the value section, this is where you'll see the alternating colors of the text color, the background color, how that works. <clears throat> we want everything in the text to be white. And we want the background to be black. Okay, we're getting closer. So now let's look at the column headers. And again, the point of doing this is you should follow along because if you can do this to this table, you can do it to all the tables you need to build. We're gonna set the background color of this to black, the text color to white, 
and also bold it. Just kind of say, hey, look at what this is. Now, what we'll see is we don't, we want to use space well. So the average rating, we don't need to have, we just call it rating. So to change anything, you can also come up into here and I'm going to call this rating. All right. And we'll get into more formatting from that. And, and same with the image URL too. We don't need to show that. We don't want that to show. Oh, I missed a very important uh, column, the plot. So if we come back over to here, I want to drag the plot after the image and we'll look at how to format that as well, where it's, it's a very cool set of data because now you can see it just kind of blew it up, but to have this plot in there, well, that's pretty darn awesome for how to give the end users the ability to learn more about their data. It's a cool attribute to have. So we're going to bring that in and we're going to, we'll format this so it all looks good as well. Let's bring this back over to the right where we were working and keep going. So firstly or next is this blue line. We don't want to see any blue line. So this is working our way down the list of formatting properties to the grid. Let's change this to the, um, well, we'll change the grid in a second, but I actually want to do the, um, oh, with this table here, the border of this grid section is we don't want it to be blue. We want it to be red and we want it to be a little bit thicker too. I think I did two over here too. Yep. So that's looking better, but let's keep working our way down this thing. So with any table, you can change things about a specific column. In this case, I'm going to, I'm looking specifically for this image URL. I don't want that to show up. There's lots of different ways you can solve it. But for this one, we're going to pick a specific column. I'm going to choose image URL and I'm going to apply to the header and the total though there won't be a total, but the text color, I want that to be black. Let's just get rid of it. We don't need to see it. It doesn't matter. Let's just take that sucker out of there. But while we're here, the specific column of rating, I want that to be at the top level, red, white. And so I change those, but I'm going to apply it to the header and the total, not the values. The values we're going to apply additional formatting to, which we'll get to using the tables and the calculations we've created. Cool. So we keep on, keep on going through this here. Now let's look at the image. At first, I'm just kind of formatting this thing to have it look about the same width, but that image isn't working at all. <clears throat> it's good. It shows up, but if you go to image size, it's very simple just to kind of change it. And you can see by default, it will, grow both these numbers together. I think I said it's like 200. So in this case, image 200. Bingo. Now that's looking cool. Simply increase the image. And again, <clears throat> a reason why I purposely brought, brought the plot in is because that, there's a space for it. There's space for that additional text to show up. So think about that as you build tables, if you have a lot of empty space, you need to take something out. But if you have purposeful fills for it or needs for it, then that's a great leverage and, and point of that great use for it. So now let's keep continuing on the process of the rating, the key rating. So what we're going to want is this to be conditionally formatted like this one is. If you come back to the big one, there's so many titles you can see how as you click, say, fives, this changes to fives. It's, it's following the same formatting. What we did previously is we have this static table set up in, if you go to the table view on the left-hand side, you can see, and there's multiple ways to do this, but we have this table that shows the fill color, the font color for every gradient level. We've created that. That's set for every row. So it can work when you're, when you're doing things at a column by column level, but this is a dynamic calculation. This is, this is changing. Um, well, I guess actually these other ones will be changing at the aggregate level. This table one might be just fine. So what I mean by that is you'll see. 
So for the rating itself, when you want to adjust and set up unique things, well, you can go to the cell elements, choose the columns. So in this case, it's going to be the rating. And you can see I've applied two things. I've applied uh, the background color to use uh, something called dynamic rating fill, as well as the font color to use something called dynamic rating font. So why that is, is under the calculation section, as these things change, I essentially took, and it's just showing you more ways to, to do it. You can use that table as well. But what this does is it essentially took that table and it put it into a calculation, a calculated switch statement. With our other things, switch says, if something's true, then do it. So this is saying if the average rating is greater or equal to zero or less than one, then make it this color. And it repeats that process. If it's between one and two, do this. Between two and three, do this. So it doesn't matter. It's, a, it's beyond the rows of a table, but like if I aggregate everything at a title or even a genre, or a larger grouping, then this formula will apply the color to whatever that total average rating is. Same with the rating font. I just took that table and translated it into this. So again, download the file from GitHub. You can look at this logic and, and use it. So to do that, we come back to the table on the right hand side that we're going to be updating. Cell elements, the rating, the background color, I want to turn it on. You can see it does it by default. I don't want to have a gradient. I want it to be based off of field value. And this is a calculation, the formatting dynamic fill. This is that calculation I just said, where if the rating is between two numbers, bring back this color. It's bring back the color and Power BI can read it. Boom, I just did it. Same with the font because it changes where if we pick like a four, it's black, it's a black font. If we pick something darker, it's a white font. So we use that same uh, cell elements, rating font color, change the format style to a field value, calculation, formatting, dynamic rating font. And there we go. So now if we sort this, those tables are looking much, much closer together, which is just exactly what we're going for. But you'll see something. We also, these grid lines, the grid line, this subtleness, it's kind of choppy. We don't want that. So uh, in the grid, we already adjusted the border, but the horizontal grid lines, we can just bump that width up. We just click it once and make it a little bit darker. I think over here, I picked a darker color. And again, this is where you can kind of use your own taste and judgment. But there you go, you know, have that, have that additional filtering capability just to make it look just a little bit sharper. Same if we go into the grid, vertical grid, we don't have any care about that. And we're set up. But now there's another question you need to think about. And what that question is, is, well, what if I want to just find a certain title? Well, again, you could add filters into this, but we're not really using that section. We're just trying to keep it all on one page. So let's set up a filter. What this is doing is again, say we come up here, we can search, you know, beyond stranger things. There you go. And then it's bringing back whatever we search for. So if we want to find a title and see how it's ranking information about it, this will do that. So the way to use these, the, how to set up a filter like this, again, I come up here and click uh, delete it. Click select all and it kind of resets it is we're going to go insert and for this we'll do an old school filter we'll get to the new filter in the next video but for this one we're going to go uh, to the filter section and we're going to pick this standard slicer so what we want it to do is slice it on the title we have a big list here well we want to drop those into a, t um, a drop down list so the slicer is a pretty fundamental setup you go in the slicer settings. We want this to be a drop down. The selection, uh, we don't need it to be single select, so you can pick many, multiple tiles if you want. Select all, turn that on, and we have 
this. So let's do some tweaking just to make it match exactly. All right. So what you'll notice is a very helpful search. I always turn this on. When you're right here, more options, click that search button. Again, now I can search before you couldn't. So to search, click the three dots, enable that search. All right, with this slicer, the start the same process of going through the size and style of the background, we don't need it on. The title, uh, we actually don't need that either. But what we can do is for the slicer header, we can put in what we want this thing to be called. So in this case, we want it to be called movies and shows and TV shows to be specific. We want this to be white, bold, and I think it's uh, a nine or a 10. Good. So we have movies and TV shows. We've just changed the label of this filter, but we need the, we need the values themselves to not be all blacked out. This, that's, that section is not really easy to read. So what we can do is go into the value section and we can change the background to white. And there you go. So now in this chapter, we've successfully built a table. You can search, it brings back images. It tells a good story. Oh, down here, you can also see this red line. We wanna turn that off. We're not trying to summarize anything with this table. It's more of a represent, representation of what's in there. So we can go to the total section, just turn this off. See you later, we don't need that. And now you go. So if we go back to the rating analytics, what we've done is we built this next section of the table that allows you to uh, see the detail of everything that's in there. What we're gonna do next is the very cool section of this new filter. You hover over it, you pick it, it changes, it, it does everything you need it to do. So let's go into that chapter right now. Let's keep going. All right, we just finished the table section with images. Now we're gonna move on to the new cool feature of these new slicers. So in the top left, you can see there's a hover section from, I wanna pick movies or TV shows. These slicers are so cool. They're awesome to set up. You'll see somewhere down here as well. We'll get to those later. But what this is doing is we're gonna dive into how to build this slicer um, using the new formatting. So let's start right now. We're gonna, again, at the intention of this, it's very easily just segment everything by movies or everything by TV shows. So to do that, let's copy it, put it on the lab tab. Again, follow along with this. I'll delete what was in our previous section. Um, oops, cancel. Delete these tabs from our previous lab tab. And we're gonna start with this. <clears throat> Don't sync, I'll, I'll zoom in as well. So let's get into this right here. All right, cool. So how do we build these, these filters? You hover over it, you pick TV shows, it filters the data. Just to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here, I'll add a quick table of number of titles. I'll zoom out and by say genre, table. I always like to have some data on there so I can just see how it's working as things are going on. Going back to the right, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this cool filter. It's, it's awesome, so let's get into it. First thing you gotta do is insert the new with the lightning bolt slicer. I went somewhere else, I need to go get that real quick. Bring it back over here. And it's back over here on the right hand side where it needs to go. So the first thing you wanna do is what data you wanna filter on. We're gonna use the listing type, which is what we set up uh, earlier in the data modeling section. So that part's very easy. You know what you want, listing type. Now how to set up and configure it is where you can get in some really granular detail, but these subtleties are what make a dashboard just seem next level. So every time I start with this new one, I like to go to the layout. <clears throat> this is where you can control the number of rows and the number of columns that show up. So in this case, we know we're only gonna have two values. If you have more, you might organize them where you can scroll through values. You can, you can scroll horizontally or vertically. But in this case, we know we're gonna stack them. So we're gonna have uh, one column and the number of rows, we only need two rows. So you can see it will always fill up everything right to that shape. I'm gonna put them right next to it. I'll put this down here so we can kind of look at stuff as we do it. 
So here we are. Now, let's make this match. So when you pick a slicer, the first thing I always like to do is to have them kind of be segmented into bubbles, make them match up. So we're gonna start with the size and style. Like we do all the other ones, turn the background off. We'll make that black. If your filter is intuitive enough, they should know you pick one. We don't need to have the word listing type. So come to the title, turn that off. Okay, we get more space already. Now the next first jump is to make those ha make them have the bubble kind of shape where they're floating. So you can go to the section called buttons, which will allow you to change everything about the button. Again, if you want to, similarly to this, the, uh, the new KPI card, you can pick the, the state you want that to happen in. If you're hovering over something or when you press or when you select it. We'll do that for the colors so you'll learn that process. But for this part of the button, um, when it comes to the shadow and the glow, we're gonna just turn them both on. We're gonna make the color white. We're gonna make this color white as well. So that's gonna do a, a subtlety right there. Let's make this the same size so we can just see how things size up too. So this is 172 by 131, <clears throat> 131. Okay, so the, again, when you hover over this, nothing cool is happening. Look at this, this cool stuff, you click movies, it's changing. You can see the stuff down there changing. It, it just looks awesome. <clears throat> so the way that you understand this is to have the differentiation of the value that's showing up and then the four states it could be in. So you have a callout value, which is this thing here. And by default, it's just when you're looking at it. Hover is if you're just put the mouse over and you're hovering. Press is the quick second when you press it down. Select it is after you've picked it. So you can control how the visual looks in all four of those states. In this case, for default, we want this to be bolded up and a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna bold it, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, a really important thing actually that you'll notice here too is the filter on the left has a more friendly title versus the listing type we created earlier. So I actually uh, need to use a new column I've created and that's going to be under formatting. So under formatting, I just did the exact same switch statement that we used earlier. And I just changed it to say, if the listing type is movie, then put the word movies. If it's television, then do TV shows. This is just showing intentionally, it's not the most efficient way, but I wanted it to be the full version of the word television earlier, uh, though you could have it be the same but how you can nest column statements. So I have one switch that's creating the listing type, another switch on top of that, so you can stack them up. Outside of calculations or inside. But anyways, so I'm gonna come over here real quick and remove this listing type, come to formatting and pick this. Movies, TV shows. <clears throat> okay, cool. So let's start changing how this thing looks. When we go to this, the first thing we'll notice is that accent bar pops up. It's gonna be red and it turns to white. So let's add those. When you go to that, that's not the value, that's a button thing. So we're gonna to go to the button and I'm gonna to go to the section for accent bar, but I'm gonna change the state to hover. So if you hover over something, I want this accent bar to show up on. I want it to be on the left, I want it to be red. Oops, I'm gonna come over here, hover, on, red, make that thing wider, left. I think I did six points, what I do? 10 points. Look at that. Oh, what you'll notice, the same thing I did earlier, are the rounded corners. So let's jump back up there real quick and adjust those. So with the shape, I just like it so much. Rounded rectangle, five points all day long. Just that subtleness, man, I like it. It makes a big difference. All right, so we have that set up. Let's keep going to the call out values. And now if you press it, oh, sorry, not the call out values, but we're looking at the buttons. So for the button, we're going back to the accent bar. 
And if you select it, well, I want that to still show up on the left-hand side, but I want it to be white. I want the width to be 10. Cool, so that's working. Again, these subtle formatting things just change the game with what you can do. So now let's change what that looks like, how the gray background and the font changes if you hover over it. So if I go, and this is where you can go between the button and the value. So in this case, we're gonna to go to if you uh, hover over something, state hover for the button, I want the fill to be this darker gray. And the specific gray, I'll get from right here. Again, I picked a gray that I just thought looked pleasing to, to my eye. Pick whatever you want. But now if I set that up, it's gonna hover, but the dark black on that doesn't look too good. So we need to change dynamically also for the callout value, the state, if you're hovering, let's change that value to be white. Look at that, it's that easy. But these subtle little cool formatting things just make the dashboard just seem so much more authentic and professional. So finally, if we click it, we wanna change the callout value to uh, B or the button to be red. Red says you picked it, it's the Netflix color, it's showing up, so hover. If it's selected, fill that sucker with the red. Boom, boom, and there you go. And so now with that formatting, again, as you build your own dashboard using other data sets, you can use those tools that I purposely selected to show different functionality options of all these slicers. Um, you can insert images too, the same way that we did with the KPI cards, which can look really sharp. I have another video that shows more detail on that. Um, but now that you've put that in there, we can go back to the ratings analytics tab, go to the view, page view, fit to page, <clears throat> And look, look at that. It just looks so sharp. So that's been successful. Oh, that, that signed out. We'll sign back in there. So there you go with that. Now the next section we're gonna dive into is creating this cool looking bar chart. So let's go. All right, in this chapter, we're gonna dive into this bar chart. This is an advanced bar chart. It has a gradient backfill, leveraging the rating conditional formatting we talked about. There's also a secondary access, which is stepped, which is cool. It's not like a line, but it actually, because it's not trending time, but it shows per category, kind of in a, trans, a transient way, uh, what the total number of titles are per item. So if I click, say, Puerto Rico, uh, or any other area, maybe South Korea, you know, North Korea, New Zealand, wherever you want to pick, uh, it's going to change this visual to show by genre now, sorted from left to right, which genre has the highest rating, but then supplementary information of which genre has the most titles. So in this case, you can see, and I could even click on this if I wanted to filter for everything in comedy in the dashboard. So of comedy, of the 1,352 titles, I can see the movie and TV show breakdown. I can see all the attributes and everything we spoke about. So we're gonna dive in how to build this awesome looking table. Let's copy it, go to the lab tab, paste it in there. All right, so at the top right, we'll zoom in a little bit too, like we have been doing. And Let's build this. So what you're gonna find is there's quite a few steps to make it happen and we're gonna go through all of them right now. So the first thing with this, what this is, you have some bar chart options. You have, you know, standard bar charts, which this is not, but then you also have the option for this line and stacked column chart. So the reason why I wanted to choose this versus say like a cluster is because I want to have that secondary access. I want to have accesses. I want to have the, the transient kind of feel of, of what the counting of a number looks like compared to the trending of a rating. So <clears throat> with that, let's look at uh, how to do it. So we're going to go insert new uh, we're going to pick that same line and stack column chart. I'll bring it over here and we can see that we need to add some stuff to it. So first things first, let's set up what we want the X axis to be. 
In this, we know of the listings, the attributes, we want that genre. <clears throat> We've added that. And we also care about now calculations, total, average rating. Create that first bar chart, very simple. All right, now we know we want the secondary item to be the uh, number of titles. So I'll add that as well. Over here, you can see it put it on the same. We need to move this, drag it to the Y. Cool. Now we have this set up, but you can, I'll switch this from, put this on the top. So now what we have is some formatting that needs to happen to make this look like this. And this is where it's easy to get the data on there, but taking the extra steps to format it to look good is just going to add over and over, almost build the legitimacy of what your dashboard looks like. So let's, let's see how to do that. Always same like the other visuals, size and style, take out that background. We don't need it. We want this thing to be black. Now let's just kind of start top down around the perimeter of this. Uh, so we know we want the uh, title. So let's go to the title section and we're gonna call this uh, average rating and number of titles by genre. Done. Center that sucker up, bold it, text color white, and we are going. So back and forth. The next is going to be the legend. So we will go to the legend section. We want that on. We don't want it in the top left. We want it in the middle. So with the legend, you can move it around. We're going to go top center. It doesn't need a title. You know, it's intuitive. I don't need to say the words what this title is. It's just going to be average rating and number of titles. But what we do need is to change this text to be white and we'll change the colors and the shapes of it as we go about the process. So that more to come there. We're going to kind of work around again. So let's jump down to the X uh, axis and we want those values to be white. We need to see them. So that's all set up white. Good to go. Now we do need to also label what these are. The average ratings on the left, zero to 10, the uh, number of views or number of titles on the right. So let's set those up and you can do that by going to the title of each axis and putting in what you want. So for this one, oh sorry, for the X, we actually don't need a title. So we're gonna turn that off. It's just gonna give us more space. We always wanna maximize space and I can actually do that for this one too. And do it right here as well. Get a little bit more space. Cool. So now that's off. Let's set this up. So the different Y. So you can see the Y axis is the one on the left hand side going vertically. The secondary Y axis is the one on the right hand side. So we'll start with the Y axis on the left hand side. We want the values of that to be white. We also want on the secondary axis, axis the values uh, to be we'll go like this. Secondary axis, we'll go values on, color white. And then we'll do title. We want this title on as well. We're gonna call this number of video titles color, we want that color to be white. And we're going to change the average rating, which was the Y axis. We're going to call this title the average rating. So now that we've done that, we'll call it, we'll call that white as well. We have that set up. So we have the perimeter established. Now let's keep looking at the granularity of what we're dealing with here. So first is I always care about the, we'll, we'll get the columns going. So what we're gonna do to change that is you can go to the column section of this chart and by default it picks a color. We don't want to use that default color because again, this is aggregating a value. So let's see what it is. Let's go to the data labels, just turn them on. They're all over the place, they're not organized. We're gonna clean those things up. 
But as you can tell, when you just turn things on by default, it's not the prettiest. You have to have intentionality for changing it. You can see there's, it's dark down here, it's light up here. These subtleties, I will show you how to do it, but you set them up, it makes your whole dashboard look so much better. So let's do this. We're gonna focus first on the conditional formatting of the bars. So we're gonna go back to the colors and using the same measure that we created before, which is gonna be under this formatting section, and you have the dynamic rating fill where it essentially says if a value is between two numbers, return a certain color. Same with the font. We're going to use that same calculation to, to pro provide the color that we want. So in this case, we're going to say use a field value, the calculations of formatting and the rating fill. Easy as that. Look at that. That gradient is looking sharp. It's going all the way down. So that's good. Now, Let's set up the data labels. So these labels, they're currently outside, they're kind of harder to see. I want them to intentionally be just inside that bar so I get a little bit more color of the bar and there's some space in there, so let's use it. So we're gonna come into, the, into this and I'm gonna go now to the data labels. And for the data labels, for the series of the average rating, I want the position of these to be inside end. Boom, just moves them into there. Now let's change the values in the background. This is such a cool functionality where you can change and really get in the details of how you want to set up and use these, uh, these settings. It's just, it's just awesome with what we can do now. So we're going to go to the value that we've selected for average rating. We're going to change that color. You can also make it dynamic as well if we wanted to. But in this case, we're going to keep it... Um, Solid, we're gonna go white, or actually we wanna go black. And the background, we're gonna have it be more of a transparent color. So I think for this, I set up 26 percentage. So up here, we'll do the same. And we're gonna bold it. For the value, it's bolded. So now that's placed just like it is down there. It's looking good. Uh, let's keep going. So those columns are set up well, check. Um, as we were looking at the background, we don't need these grid lines. They're just taking up space. They're kind of uh, confusing the whole situation. So just turn them off. See you later, we don't need them. We have these to kind of give the eye enough guidance, but we don't need any more. Now let's go formatting the next part of this thing, which is gonna be uh, the line. So for this line, the series, you can pick different shapes and types. For this line style, we want it to be solid, but the line type, this is where you can get that cool bar chart feel. We want it to be a step. <sighs> Again, the difference is a step. Smooth kind of makes a smooth curvy line. Linear is a very straight line. Step is almost replicating a bar, which just looks so cool when you stack it against the bar like this. So we'll do that, but for the color, we're gonna pick a lighter color. I think for this one I chose, we'll just copy this color that I picked down here. Again, pick the colors you can, this is where you get some creative freedom. You know, pick colors that, that look good together. When, when in doubt, you know, uh, go with things that are kind of lighter and kind of blend well together. But now that we're up here, it's really cool you can turn on the shade area. So that automatically now just kind of set the tone of this whole visual and these steps to, to show the differences of titles uh, right there like that. So let's, let's move the data labels though. We don't want them uh, at the top kind of overlapping. We want to separate them as much as possible. So in this case, we're going to say, put them at the top or the outside of the bar that's down there. So to do that, we're going to minimize the columns. We're gonna go back to the data label section and this time we're gonna say for the data labels, for the number of titles, we want those to show, but we want them actually above. And now they've all moved to, the, to be above. We want the value to be white, but then we want to have the background to be this dark gray. And the transparency, you know, turn that sucker off to zero. So now that's really clear and popping out with what we need to do there. But we still have a few more updates. 
but we have a couple more updates to make. So if we come back into this, uh, we're going to uh, go to the Y axis because what you can do actually, or actually the secondary axis, when you have two of them, something you can do to get a little bit more space is align the zero. So I always like to turn this on. For the range, align the zeros, you can just see it's gonna align them, the zeros are gonna line up, you get a little bit more space and utilization there. And then also for the legend, uh, I want the marker to be aligned. So I have this line going now. And what we've just done is we built this bar chart that has a gradient uh, scale going from average rating to show the viewer what that is. The bars themselves are, uh, is actually a line that has a shaded background to make it transparent to show the titles. Everything's locked and loaded. So now if I go through, I pick different titles. I'll do this view real quick. Page view fit to page. You know, if I'm sorting again, looking at all the sevens, I can see for fives what's going on with the ratings and the groupings, how things are shaping up. Uh, and we have set up that bar chart. So that's a success. Now the next thing we're gonna jump into is this table on the left-hand side, which is gonna show country information. A key thing about this table will be uh, how there's bar charts involved as well as dynamic formatting. It'll be a quicker one that we're gonna jump into this geographical build out. So let's go. All right, now for this chapter, we're gonna dive into this table on the left-hand side. This will be the shortest chapter in the whole tutorial, but it's an important one because what this can do, it can allow us, anytime we have a map or something, it's always good to add additional content. We have this geographical display that we'll get into in the next chapter, but I wanna show it attributes and details about it over here on the left. So this will list every country, people can click on it, but it also shows the number of titles the average rating, so people can sort highest to lowest, number of votes, votes per title. It shows, it leverages conditional formatting as well as the number of titles. So if I click, you know, TV shows, uh, and I'm interested in United Kingdom, I can see that information. So let's do the lab tab. We're gonna copy this, go to the lab tab, paste it, and we're gonna build the same visual from a table. So these things are just really important. I'm gonna zoom in. And we have our table here. Let's build the same thing right next to it. So the first thing we do is go to insert, pick a table. <clears throat> we have a blank canvas. The easiest first step, obviously, is to just add the countries or add the attributes you want. So we want country, the number of titles, the average rating, the number of votes, and the number of votes per title. So again, quite frequently what you see from people who use Power BI or any dashboarding thing is they add the data that's needed, but they don't go through the extra steps to make it look good of doing the formatting on the left-hand side that we're gonna see here. I'm gonna show you how to go through and do this. This will equip you to do it with other tables as well. So first things first is, is for this, we want the background of this table to be black. So when we go to this table, we can choose values and we're gonna set the background color to be black for each row and the text color to be white for every row. We've done that, we've got that set up. Now we also wanna go with the size and style. So first turn off the background colors, we don't need that at all. Uh, you can see we've changed that. So let's next go to the column headers. And with the column headers, we're gonna set that to black and the text to white. We're gonna bold the text to have it pop out a little bit more. And we've already taken those steps to make that better. We're gonna get into every detail though, how to format the whole entire thing. So now the total section, you can control the totals. If we come down here, we want the text color to be white uh, as well. So that, that update is aligning that. You can see the grid lines. These are kind of spaced out. They're not as solid as we want them to be. So let's go to the grid section. We're gonna increase the width of that. It's a little bit too big, so or a little bit too bold. So we're gonna to come to this color I chose a color that I thought looked good. We'll come over here and apply the same color by simply pasting in that version. And now we have those colors. Again, with the table as well, you can change the grid, not just with the horizontal, but on the overall border, which this default blue is what it goes to. Well, let's set that to uh, the Netflix red and change that to a two as well. So we've framed up our data perfectly framed up the data. Now we can modify 
columns uh, specifically that we want. So the two we're going to focus on is titles, as you can see, that has a data bar in it, as well as average rating. So the data bar is going to be the easiest one first. So we're going to go to that. And again, for modifying things that have the dynamic conditional formatting, that's going to be within a cell element. So every cell element you can choose titles, average ratings, votes. In this case, we're going to pick titles and we want that to have a data bar. So the data bar, we're going to turn it on. And as you, by default, I just turn it on. It's blue. Well, I just want it to be the Netflix red. So a positive bar is red, a negative bar white, though there's not a negative bar. And we'll turn that on. Also the axis, we want that to be red as well. And just like that, we've set it up. So now we're, we're good to go there with the data bars. I actually want to go back to ratings and anal analytics and set the master one as well to go fit to page. And this table, we're going to go to the cell elements and we're going to go to data bars and change this axis to red as well. And there you go. So now the lab tab, let's go back. We'll zoom in. That's just an, another good update that we just made there. Uh, what we want to do is set the conditional formatting. So the same way that we do the conditional formatting uh, here, where you can see it actually changes the font as it, or as it goes from the sixes down to the fives, we'll do the same with this. So to do that, we're going to leverage the same columns we've created already, the dynamic fill and the dynamic uh, font. And again, the, the previous sections in this video showed how to create those and what's in them. But very simplistically, now that we've created them, let's use them for a bunch of cool stuff. So we're going to go to the average rating and we want to change the background color to be dynamic. We want to do it on a value based upon the calculation that we have from formatting of filling. Apply that. That's looking good. And uh, we also want to change the font. You know, we want that font to change too. So we're going to turn that on. And the font, we're going to set it to be a field value of the calculations. And it's going to be specifically the font. We click that and we're good. We've built this clutch table. It's a key component of the next step, which is going to be the geography section. So again, if we go back to the ratings tab, we're going to go view fit to screen. And the next step we're going to dive into is the geographical section here. And what's extremely cool about this is, of course, we see the stats over here for every country, but we're going to go through the process to enable end users to choose the ratings based upon or the bubble sizes based upon certain things you click. It's actually changing the measure behind the scenes, number of votes, number of votes per title, etc. So we're going to build this section next. Uh, let's go. All right, in this final chapter, we're gonna dive into this dynamic section at the bottom with the geo mapping. This is so cool because not only do you use those typical features of zooming in, but you can change the bubble sizing. I'm gonna show you how to set this up using the same cool filtering where you can pick something and it actually changes the size of the bubbles, passing different measures to your map. So this will be a principle you can apply to anything you're using that builds maps on any dashboard to enable end users more features and functionality. Uh, so let's dive into that right now. What we're going to do is copy these two items, put them on the lab tab. Don't worry about syncing them up and we're going to start to build them. So I'm going to do two things. Firstly, I'm going to move this title section over here for now. It doesn't look right. We'll get to that, but let's set this map up. <clears throat> so actually what I'll do is I'll bring this back just out of the the way that I like to work, keep things all synced up. We'll zoom in a little bit and let's do it. So to build this map, it's going to be an Azure map. And uh, to pick it, I'll move this right here. Now we're going to go to insert of the map choices. We're going to choose the Azure map. Awesome. Disclaimer, very cool. So there's some key setup things that we're going to want for this. The location is going to be the country, which during the data prep stages of this, we already set up. So the country location, 
Because that is set up, you'll see by default, I'll move this to the top. I'll switch these around. So you can see that the additional formatting steps makes everything just look so much better and tells a good story with it. So here it is by default. <clears throat> now, as the tonality of this entire Netflix analytics dashboard is dark, we want to have this be dark as well. But what I don't want is I don't want the users to pick all this stuff and clutter the screen. So I did just change it, but I'm gonna show you how to prevent people from changing it. So I always like to do this, as well as the borders, we're gonna go through this process. Size and style, background, turn it off, don't need it. Remove this title, we don't need the title. Obviously this is a map, so we can turn the map off. Great. Now map settings, under controls, I do want the world wrap, and that's where you can keep scrolling, it just keeps going forever left to right, that's pretty cool. But the style picker, nope, you don't get to pick the style. Uh, for the navigation, uh, you don't get that either. If you want to uh, scroll in, just roll your mouse so you can get closer. So they have everything they need right here. Good. Now we have the map and what I want to do is again, if we go back to rating analytics, if someone's here, they can tell by a couple of things, both the size of the bubble to indicate the number of titles. That's what I have selected here. Um, I can click a bubble, see that's Japan, see their videos, go from there. But also as a secondary item, it's showing uh, the, if I pick another one, it's showing the intensity of the red based upon the average rating or the average rating here. So if I sort this, I can see that Puerto Rico has the highest average rating, but they also have one video. So it's not as weighted and you get to get that information by using these these things together so the point of that being if we go back to the lab tab there's two key things we care about with this visual if i click it i'm going to go to the bubble layer and oh let's go back let's turn this thing back to dark mode so i'm going to map settings grayscale dark <clears throat> the bubble layer well i want this bubbles to be bigger but how do they adjust? How do they change? So if I open this up, you can see that there's an option for where to put the size. So for now, I'm gonna put something and we'll eventually change it. So right now I want the size of that to be based upon the number of titles. Okay. And I want the magnitude, the maximum to be larger. So I'm gonna bump this up to 50 like my other video, or other map. Scaling, you can go on the range of data or the magnitude. Uh, the big difference here is that magnitude kind of encapsulates negative values. So the more negative or it is from zero, the larger the bubble will get. Think of it like a, expanding that way versus just always growing from low to high. So in this case, we just want always growing from low to high data. And the color, uh, we want the uh, default color not to be a... Um, static color, we want it to be dynamic. So we're gonna use that same feel that we've created, we've used on all the other listings. If you haven't seen it, go check out the other chapters, but it's gonna be calculations, formatting, dynamic rating fill. Boom, it's using that dynamic fill, aggregating the average rating and giving it a color. It's such a cool trick. Now for each of these, we can see if we wanna do additional formatting, you could change the shape, the transparency. I think I did a slight transparency on this one. Uh, 10%, just a little bit so you can kind of see through. Uh, colors, we already looked at that. The border, you can have a high contrast, which is kind of takes that same color and power bias as this is a highly contrasting color. I think that the choice can be a little bit different um, by going with a, a, a white color. So I take that off and I like the white. I think it just pops more. But I do change it to make it a little bit transparent so it's a, kind of a little bit more see-through. 26, and we've done that. Uh, as well as, you know, if you wanted to, the zoom and everything set up, that's there. So you know it's not in this one, but for future reference, as you build these out, most certainly have other layer options on the right hand side. You can get into uh, reference layers, heat maps. Uh, you can try uh, the category label is clutter things up. I don't like those, but some people like the columns as well turn on these vertical columns. Uh, I have another menu or another uh, video where I've talked about that. But we're gonna do this part of this dashboard is how do we enable the functionality for this thing to change? I'm gonna show you. So you can see right here, these maps are the same. 
But if I click this, it's going to change the bottom one, but not the, the top one. So how do we set this up? All right, well, I have a couple first, you need the calculations. So I do have the number of titles, the number of votes, the number of votes per title, which takes total votes divided by the number of titles, and then the average rating. All these calculations we've talked about, they're all very basic. But this is the cool functionality you can do to a map to enable more user interactivity. It's by creating field parameters. So you're gonna see that in the data model down here in the bottom right, I called it Z uh, parameter map size. And turn that title back on. But what that's gonna do is Z parameter map size, it is a parameter that picks different fields. So here's how you create it. I'm gonna make a new one and set it up for this, just as a test. So I know these calculations are I want what I want the parameter to pick. This is literally picking a calculation from the right-hand side over here. So if you go to modeling, a new parameter, well, you can have a field parameter. And this is cool because now I can go into calculations. I want this parameter to be the number of titles, the number uh, or the average rating, the number of votes, and the number of votes per title. And I want this to be called, in this case, I called it what's there on the right, but I'll call it, you know, delete me parameter. All right, create this. We have a new delete me parameter. And what this, what it does by default is it adds it as a filter onto the page, which is right here. And uh, it also creates it as a value. So what does that mean? That means that this right over here on the right hand side is literally going to be whatever's chosen or selected from here. <laughs> so what we can do is if we go back to this map and we open up the available data points and say, instead of saying the size is titles, let's take that off. We want the size to be this delete me parameter, which I created, which is already existing. So I'm going to move this to the size. And you'll see that now I can control it, but there'll be some issues at first and I'll show you how to fix those. So if I pick it, it's not, it's not totally working perfectly yet. And the reason why is because we have to do a couple of things to this filter. So firstly, for the slicer settings, we need it to be a single select only. Only pick one title, but also within that selection, um, we want to ensure that it's the style of it is gonna be a dropdown. So we're going to go to the slicer settings and we want it to be a drop down. So we've done that. Uh, well, actually, no, we want it to be tiles. I'm sorry. So we have our tiles here. And again, immediately it's not formatting the way we want. It doesn't look kind of as cool as we think. Uh, so what we can do is copy the formatting. So what I did previously is as I went through the detail of how to format this, uh, this filter, what you can do is if you've already gone through the process of formatting something, uh, you can copy it right onto this. So what that means is I'm going to actually just delete this visual altogether. I'm going to create a new one that takes this delete me and, oops, sorry. I'm gonna actually delete this again because I wanted to intentionally pick the new slicer, drag this out to here. And on this is where I want the delete me parameter. But you can copy the formatting. It helps things just go along so much faster. So to make this, I'm going to click this that I already created. Again, go back in the video if you need to see the chapter on this filter. But you can format the painter, copy it, Simply click another visual and we format it. So it's gonna have the same hover and same clicking, but the layout's different. So let's change that. I go to layout. I want this to be uh, four rows. Um, I'm sorry, one row, four columns. Boom, just like that. And now this delete me parameter that this map up here is using is set up to sync with this. So. Also, I can't click more than one. It, you can't have multiple sizes, so that's confusing. So you have to do a couple things. In the slicer settings, we're gonna go single select, but then also click for selection. So you have to pick something. You can't not pick a size, it must be selected. So we're gonna have titles, 
average rating, votes, votes per title. And think about what you can do. There's so many possibilities of how to create these field parameters and leverage them in not just this visual, but any other visual to enable end users to pick and interact and change what that visual is doing. It's just extremely cool. So now through that process, we have created uh, the geo map. When you add it all together, you have the final product. Congratulations. You have built the Netflix analytics dashboard from scratch. You've gone through with the, the card references, the filters. We have the funnel chart, the bar chart, the dynamic sorting of the titles, everything from scratch to finish, the end to end tutorial. We hit all the major milestones that Power BI has. You take these key concepts, apply them to dashboards you're building, and you're gonna build better quality products. So thank you for watching. I hope you got a lot of information from this. Leave a comment, ask me any questions, uh, subscribe. I look forward to making more content for you. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a good day. I'll talk to you later, bye.